It's an unusual sight. A mob of 40 Angus cattle contained to a weedy, frost-affected patch of paddock by an invisible fence line. The adjacent barley crop safely out of their reach. The CSIRO's Dr Rick Llewellyn is in charge of a South Australian trial investigating how this new e-shepherd technology can be used in mixed farming enterprises as part of the overall weed management strategy. This trial in Pinaroo is the second one we've done as part of this GRDC trial using virtual fencing and the, the aim here in this paddock is to graze out an area that's been affected by frost. It's got some weedy areas due to some poor establishment and right here the, the grain yield probably would have only been about a third of what it was elsewhere in the paddock. So not really great for hay either. So the opportunity for virtual fencing is to see whether we can fence it off and allow these, these cattle to come in and graze out this area, get some grazing value and leave the rest of this uh, cropping paddock for, for harvest. This is Heath and Amanda Nichols' cattle and grain farm. On this particular country, brome grass is our biggest issue. It's established itself really well in a dry year too, I reckon, and we didn't get a, a knockdown on this country due to a dry start and dry seeding, and it'll really choke everything out, really. It's good at that. <laughs> we thought this would be a real test for the technology. You've got a valuable crop with good prices just uh, over, over the fence, and we're protecting that and, and grazing out this uh, this sort of frost affected uh, area down the bottom here. So it's a, a pretty distinct line that you're seeing. That distinct line is best seen from the air. The cattle have already grazed one patch and were moved into the new section a few days before filming. The weeds are thinning out there too now as the cattle graze happily within the new boundary. Every heifer is wearing a neckband, which will beep when she gets close to the virtual fence, prompting her to turn back into the contained area. So the important features are it's got the, the solar panel and that's so important for the, the power, especially when you're using this over a long period. And that's why the device is quite large. It's got this solar panel on top, it's got the antenna that communicates with the tower and that's what lets us see the animals on the on the laptop and manage the fencing. And then importantly, it's got this counterweight which allows it to always stay in the right position on the animal. Heath Nichols has been surprised by the effectiveness of the virtual fence line. How much they do actually respect the, the, the line and learn where to graze to, yeah, that's been quite interesting. And I like the fact that if an animal goes over the line, they'll get a noise, but then when they start moving back to their line, it, it'll shut down, so it entices them to come back to the mob. If the animal continues through the first audio alert, it will receive follow-up alerts before a final sensory pulse. Dr Rick Llewellyn says the animals learn quickly though to respond to the early audio. The good thing about this technology is that the developers uh, in the, with CSRO, based at Armidale, led by Caroline Lee, I mean, they're animal welfare scientists, so a lot of this background work's been done to, to get it through and show that it is safe and the, yeah, the animals are happy when it's uh, being applied. So that's really important to us. And here we're able to really focus on the, the practical applications for farmers and where that opportunity might be. The invisible fence lines can be set up on a phone or a laptop according to GPS coordinates. Yeah, we're able to track a few of them there and you can see where they've been today. Yep. They've been pretty active over here on the western side, haven't they? That's right, they've tested the fence, they've found out where the new boundary is. And... The cattle show up as green markers. The yellow lines are the path each animal has taken. The yellow arrows show where they have tested the virtual fence line. And Heath Nichols has aligned each neckband with the animal's registered ear tag. So we can actually see what individual animals are doing, where they're moving and their habits, I guess, and which ones test the boundaries a bit more than others. So it's actually quite interesting. The researchers are also gathering vegetation data so they can accurately assess how well the technology works to reduce the vegetation load by comparing the biomass on either side of the invisible borders. This rig is called a crop circle. So using the crop circle, you're able to measure the greenness across the whole, the whole paddock, and then you're able to calibrate that by taking cuts and equate that to the measures that are taken, and then draw the calibration curve, and then we're able to map the biomass. So that, that's something that farmers are really interested in as well. They do a lot of that with cropping. In this case, we're also measuring the grazing um, biomass as well that's being taken away. This is the second trial in this weed-busting program the first was conducted at Long Plains, north of Adelaide. 
It was a vetch crop that was going into pasture, so we wanted to graze it hard, uh, controlling weeds before it went into the, uh, the next crop. And being ryegrass, we were able to graze it hard using this, this approach, and we ended up halving the, the number of ryegrass seed heads in that, in that trial by, by tackling it hard, and also at the same time managing the ground cover on, the, on that area as you head into summer, which is really important. It's early days, but Heath Nichols can see a future in his mixed farming enterprise, particularly in the dual purpose barley. Yeah, once it's established enough, we'll graze, graze areas, uh, paddocks out, but we don't never graze it evenly enough. So, you know, they'll always graze more around trees or the, the trough, and then the furthest point of the paddock seems to get left alone. So we don't get an even graze. So that's probably, I think, the, will be the biggest winner for us if we were ever to use this technology is to, for evenness of grazing on, on those dual purpose barleys. So, yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool. The next step in this GRDC and Australian Wool Innovation investment is to trial the virtual fencing system with sheep, as it's expected they'll be more effective as hard grazers. That's why we like to do this work on farm, because you start to learn the practicalities and just where the most uh, effective and uh, most high value fit might be on a farm. So we really do think it has great potential and, and farmers keep telling us to bring this technology along and that's what we really hope hope happens.